It's been a couple of weeks since we've been together. We Thanksgiving, uh, we were off, and so we're going to remind you that we're going over the Lord's Prayer, which is uh, uh, the model prayer Jesus has given, uh, gave to his disciples, and then gives to us today. Not a prayer that necessarily has to be recited, but a prayer that gives us a pattern uh, and uh, kind of gives us some guidance on how we should pray. So we'll begin in uh, chapter 6 and verse 9. Jesus says, After this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Um, we're going to focus on verse 11, first of all, tonight, and then, I, then we'll also look at verse 12. Verse 11 says, Give us this day our daily bread. Uh, with the way you and I uh, are provided for today in our today's world, the idea of asking God for bread is kind of laughable because we eat so well and we're so well provided for. Certainly, uh, there are very few Americans uh, today that uh, are, have experienced hunger in any degree at all. But in Jesus' model prayer, there's more to this part of the prayer, there's more to this verse than, than meets the eye. Bread not only represents food, but it, it it's, uh, represents all of our physical needs. It, it represents the things that, uh, that uh, you might not think about, the things that are necessary for physical health and safety and upkeep. Uh, and those things go far beyond uh, uh, food. Uh, it, 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 it involves anything that pre would preserve us uh, from day to day. And the Bible tells us in James chapter 1, verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. And so we know that whatever provision it is, whether it be medication, whether it be food, whether it be clothes on our back, whatever the case is, it is given by God. Every last bit of it and the most important thing about this prayer is that it it points us to God as the provider number uh, verse 9 uh, tells begins with our father that's who we're talking to and then we get down to verse 11 give us this day our daily bread and so we're acknowledging uh, that uh uh, that, that he is the supplier. He's the one that provides. Uh, when we pray that way, that's what we're acknowledging. And, and you know, when all of our needs are met, uh, when we're doing well, uh, we seem to have everything that we need, we tend to think uh, not, hey, Father, thank you so much, but we tend to think, well, look how good we're doing. We, have a, we, 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 uh, we earn our money, we pay our bills, we buy our groceries, we make our house payment, and so on and so forth, and, and it, it, that lends towards thinking, well, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And the reality of it is we take our eyes off the one who has really done great for us, and that's God and his provision. And so um, we, we really need to be cautious uh, and this prayer, again, gives us that model of directing our prayers towards the Father and recognizing that our daily uh, needs are met. Our bread, if you will, is supplied by Him. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18, it says, Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is He that giveth thee power to get wealth. And so even the, the, the jobs that we have and the, that, that provide the money, that buys the groceries, all of that is given uh, by God. Even before God created man, he had already created the provisions that man was going to need. If you remember in Genesis chapter uh, 1, man was the final creation. It came after uh, the animals. It came after the vegetation. It came after the water sources. Uh, then all of these things would be necessary to sustain man. And then God, after it was all said and done, God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree, and the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed uh, to you, and it shall be for meat. So God says, I've already taken care of. He no sooner created, and he says, I already got you provided for the things that you need. And uh, since that time, he's never ceased to uh, make that provision. Uh, in, in, in reality, it's, it's almost been uh, an unlimited variety throughout. Uh, you think about it. We can go home this evening. Now, I 
can guess what we're going to have on Wednesday night. We typically, Trish brings home pizza. But we could have pork, we could have fish, we could have fowl, we could have beef, we could have mutton, we could have any number of vegetables or fruits or breads or pastries or seeds or nuts or eggs or it's, it's quite a variety, is it not? I'm telling you, uh, it's uh, God has provided well for us and uh, it goes far beyond just our daily bread. And But when we pray, give us our daily bread is to recognize that we need Him for provision. And and, and it's it's really to... to to, to acknowledge him in prayer each time uh, we, we uh, pray uh, about these issues is to, to show him that we're not taking it for granted, to show him that we haven't lost sight of his provision. We're telling him that we know it all comes uh, for him. But with our prayers of provision also comes a responsibility. And that responsibility is this, to be doing what we can to contribute to our well-being. Uh, that's something we often overlook. God's primary source of providing for you and I is what? Our own uh, 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 going to work. Uh, what am I? Uh, indust- uh, pr- pr- productivity. God uses our own selves as a tool to provide for our needs. In, in other words, he says, give us this day our daily bread. Where does bread come from? It comes from wheat. Where does wheat come from? It comes from the ground, and a, a seed has to be planted, a seed has to be cultivated and irrigated and, and, and uh, harvested, and then it has to be threshed, and then it has to be ground, and then it has to gets to be cooked into bread, you see? And that, the whole process involves man being industrious and productive and doing what he can for his own provision. You say, well, I'm not a wheat man. Well, you work a job, and, and you make money to go buy the the, the bread that the wheat man has produced, you see? And that's just the way that works. And so uh, we dare not uh, uh, get the idea that uh, we can just do anything we want and God's miraculously going to uh, plop a loaf of bread in the oven for us. Uh, it doesn't work that way. We have to be responsible. And so as important as it is for us to pray for provision, we also must do our part to work and provide uh, for ourselves. And then last of all in this particular verse uh, th- that we must note is he says our daily bread. Um, it's day to day folks that God provides for us. We often want our provision in advance. We want, uh, we like the idea of, of having an abundant supply already laid in so we can, so we can just uh, take a, a, a deep breath and say ah we're in good shape. But God wants us to learn to trust Him from day to day. God wants us to learn uh, to, uh, to have faith. Uh, not that it's wrong to have a savings or wrong to have a, uh, uh, something to fall back on. That's not at all it. But our faith is exercised when we have to wait upon Him for provision from time to time. It's not always that way, but a lot of times He says, Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you... Uh, have to pray about this one a little bit and and uh, it's not that he doesn't want to provide but he also wants us to have strong faith faith pleases him and so it's not always uh, there in advance if it were always there in advance we'd lose our appreciation for it and we'd take it for granted so with that being said let's move on to verse 12 verse 12 says and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors see that's what Oh, that's that's what Biden's going to do. He's going to forgive all the debts, uh, <laughs> but 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 that's not what's being talked about here. Um, that wouldn't be a bad thing I, if they go beyond student loans and do my mortgage it would be fine. But <laughs> I don't think they're going to do that. So um, anyway, I need not get into all that. But but um, the word debt here is not the word that you and I are accustomed to using. Um, it's the word that we use for when you owe somebody something. That's not what it is here in this context. It, uh, it's a reference to sin. And, and we know that if you were to look at the Luke's account of the Lord's Supper, or the Lord's Prayer, rather, it's found in Luke chapter 11. He uses the word trespass, which is uh, a little more clear about so we know that God says when, we, when uh, Jesus prays his prayer, he says, forgive us of our sins or trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And so uh, with that understood, uh, and by the way, the traditional recital of uh, 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 
of the Lord's Prayer also refers to it as sin or trespass uh, as well, okay? No, in fact, in fact, Luke, Luke does refer to it as sin. It's, a, uh, it's what we typically recite is, is trespass, but anyway. So there's no question he's talking about, and when he uses the word debt here, he's talking about sin. Uh, let me read to you what author Pink writes about this. He says, as, a, as it is contrary to the holiness of God, sin is a defilement, a dishonor, and a reproach to us as it is in a violation of the law. It is a crime. And as to the guilt which we contact thereby, it is a debt. As creatures, we owe a debt of obedience unto our maker and governor, and through failure to render the same on account of our rank disobedience, we have incurred a debt of punishment. And it is for this that we implore a divine pardon. And that's pretty fancy words, but he's explaining to us what we are in debt to God. Uh, our sins have created a debt. And the greatest problem we have in our life, bar none, is our sins. And so that means the greatest need we have is for forgiveness. And, of course, uh, though we are, we're forgiven as Christians, uh, born-again believers, we're forgiven of the penalty of sin immediately. Uh, we still need daily forgiveness or daily uh, 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 confession and, and uh, uh, basically an apology to God for our sins. It's, it's something that, that is often misunderstood. In a judicial sense, all of our sins, when we trusted in Christ, all of our sins were taken care of in a judicial sense. Past, present, ever uh, future, every sin we'll ever commit, every sin we ever have committed is already under the blood of Jesus Christ. It's taken care of judicially. We're no longer condemned. We're no longer separated from God by that sin, and we're no longer destined uh, for hell. But though we've been pardoned of all of those sins, confession is still something that needs to take place in our life, and that's the why, why the New Testament continues to talk about the confession of sin. We're confessing to God at, not as judge, but we're rather confessing to Him as our Father. And uh, essentially, when we come to God with our sins and say, God, I'm sorry, I have done this, and confess that, we're acknowledging that we've done wrong, and we're acknowledging that, uh, that uh, it's a violation of who he is. And we're, we're, we're saying we're sorry, essentially, when we continue to confess our sin. It keeps our fellowship with God strong. It keeps our, uh, our relationship healthy, if you will. It's kind of like this, and you've probably heard me a jillion times use this analogy, but David and I are really good friends. And if I were to do something against David, some sort of offense would be equivalent to sin, Okay, uh, I have strained our relationship. Now, I haven't severed it, but I've strained that relationship by the offense that I've committed uh, towards him. And, and, and the way to healing that strain, the way to bringing it back to the way it needs to be, a healthy, strong relationship, I need to go to him and say, here's what I've done, and I'm sorry for it, you see. And so that's just a, a small picture of our uh, responsibility to God to do the same thing. Uh, every sin that we commit is an offense to God, great or small. Every sin is an uh, offense to God. And so we need to take responsibility for ourselves and go to him and confess those things and say, God, I recognize this is, this is what I've done. And I know that's uh, against who you are and what you stand for. And I apologize. And that's essentially what the need for confession is. Our relationship with God is not severed by that sin because we were already pardoned, but it's just strained, you see. And so uh, now let's qu quickly go over the last part of that verse 12, and then we will be done. He says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Uh, simply saying, forgive us of our sins or trespasses as we forgive those who have sinned and trespassed against us. Uh, God's people are to be a forgiving people. Uh, just as the God forgave us through Christ, uh, we're to do the same things for those that hurt us. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.32, he says, Be the kind affection to one another. No, that's not the one, is it? Well, anyway, it says, Forgiving one another for, uh, as God hath forgiven us for Christ's sake. 
and, uh, and, and, and just simply meaning that it, just as God has wiped the slate clean for us uh, through Christ and what he did on the cross, we have to be willing to continually, and 70 times 7, as Jesus says, in other words, just never stop forgiving people, wiping the slate clean, Forgiving again and again and again, and that's a difficult thing. But here's what should motivate us. Um, besides being commanded to be forgiving, it should motivate us that, hey, it's those who show mercy that receive mercy. The Bible, just a couple of pages back in, in, in the, uh, the Beatitudes, he, he tells us that, uh, he says uh, in chapter 5 and verse 7, he says, Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. It's, a, it's a, a hard, unforgiving person can expect the least amount of mercy from God. Not that they won't have, can't be saved, but I'm saying when we mess up, and, and we do, sometimes bad, we want God to take it easy on us. We want God to, uh, to lighten his hand of, of correction, right? That's just what we want. And especially when we've really messed up things, we want him to help us fix that, and that's mercy that helps us fix that. Well, if we have not extended that same spirit of mercy to the people around us, we're not characterized by that. We cannot expect God to do us that way. We can't. And uh, no matter how severe the violation is towards us, we must strive to forgive people. And, and even, even if it's over and over and over again, because that's what really tends to have great violations, we have to continually forgive. Because why? We normally don't forget. And so when it resurfaces, we get angry again, we get upset again, and we have to go right back into prayer and forgive that person again. It might be a daily thing. It might be a lifetime thing but we still have a responsibility to make every effort that we can uh, to uh, forgive the sins of others. And, and uh, so we, uh, it's the right thing to do. We're commanded to do it, but also we'll, we'll be glad we did when we uh, are looking for mercy from God because we can plead to him and say, God, I, I've been a merciful person myself. Please be merciful to me. And uh, I believe he hears that prayer. Okay, appreciate you guys very much. We'll uh, go ahead and be dismissed in a word of prayer. Guys, just keep praying, keep, uh, keep inviting, keep checking on people. We're going to get there one of these days. We're going to get our people back, okay? Glad you're here tonight, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you back here on Sunday. Let's go ahead and stand. We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. And pray for Susanna Cisneros' family tomorrow, and we can be a blessing to them, okay? Randy, will you lead us in a word of prayer, please?